National Football League brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Baltimore Ravens. From his end zone, here comes Jerome Ford. And he returns this to the 22. First play, Watson to the air. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Yeah, he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Here's Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. A gain of four, not enough. And it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven. On the option right is Jackson. It's going to be a gain of six on the keeper, but it leads to a third down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third and short, they'll try option left. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the option, here's Edwards. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. That O line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now it's Jackson. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 24-yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Edwards now on first and 10. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. 
but that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's Edwards again on second down. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Odell Beckham from 21 yards away. And the Ravens will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. set to kick it away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got to look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here too after a good stop. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw is Watson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. As they've got it as we resume action. Watson on first down. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find answers, and they've got to find them quick. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So a decent game there on the play, but that all gets wiped out with a penalty. Well, that's a setback, but all the good play callers, they just move on. They find something else in the playbook that can attack this defense. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Adafi Owe showing off the pass rush skills. Owe, one of the most gifted athletes coming off the edge in the AFC. The key for him, translating that athletic ability into consistent production. Hasn't quite unlocked it all yet. Only three sacks last season, but the potential is immense. More the motion man right. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. Third down and 13. From the gun, here's Watson. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. 
Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least if they think a field goal turns out to be the better call here. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So they are able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Field goal for three. Hopkins now to kick it off. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On second down, it's Edwards. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Here's third and nine. Jackson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. To the 43, second down. Here's Jackson to throw. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed, his elusiveness, and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Now Jackson on first down. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. On second down, here's Jackson. They set up the screen to Hill. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. First and ten, it's Jackson. 
And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Jackson now. Oh, look at the juke. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. From the gun, they go to Edwards. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Gus Edwards punching it in from a yard away. And the Ravens will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And this drive, Charles, very well timed as they score with very little time remaining in this first half. And I'm reminded that they get the second half kickoff as well, so they can break this one wide open before the other guys have a chance to possess the football. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Cleveland offense ready to go. On first down, Watson. It's incomplete, took a shot, couldn't connect. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Not wanting to take a chance this time, they'll keep it on the ground. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Now a third and six. Watson. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! The Ravens ready to receive it, and they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three, because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. 
They'll go back to Edwards on first down. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. 43 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Second down and four. In motion left goes a tight end. Again, it's Edwards. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Browns territory. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. And Brandon, this is the time of the game when Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead. This is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Anthony Walker up behind the line and finishing that play off. Well, they've had success on the ground on this drive, and that makes a defense more likely to overcommit to stop the run as they did on that play. But keep in mind, it makes them susceptible to play action passes as well. They go with Edwards left side, and they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly fit. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Juan Thornhill. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Browns' defense has a touchdown. After the interception, here's Watson. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and five. Throwing is Jackson. That's for Bateman, and it's intercepted. 
Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the 8-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. And that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Back to throw, Watson. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Hunt. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that tell the football that exists when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Hopkins' kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. So with less than a minute gone by here in this fourth quarter, the field goal there gets this thing back to even. And it's setting up for a fantastic finish, isn't it, partner? It's been a well-played game, a hard-hitting game. The fans are into it. The announcers are into it. This is going to be a great fourth quarter. setting up for a great finish all tied in the fourth as the kicks away this fielded right at the goal line and not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23 the Baltimore offense at the line set to get going and we essentially have a brand new ball game after that last field goal has tied us all up we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Miles Garrett showing that athleticism as he gets in to make the play. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That one good for 26 and a first down. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. 
Jackson running again. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. A gain of eight on the keeper and a first down. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop, and it just never materialized, and down he went behind the line of scrimmage. Now an option play on second down. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. And he'll go down. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. And that time, finally, a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case. That has to feel good for the defense. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. The Browns drive about to get started. They will start this drive with Ford. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. second down here's Watson and that is incomplete a lot of force bearing down on him there he could not hang on it's third down that would have been a tough catch but in this two minute drill those are the ones you really hope your guys come up with yeah you don't want your guy to be able to take the out because it was a tough catch you needed him to come up with that one because if he does it alters the perspective of this two minute drill doesn't it into the hands of Cooper and they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And this is obviously a spot where you lean on your stars. Get the ball to them in open space and let them do what they do. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. On the ground, it's Ford. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Second and six coming up. To throw, Watson. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. From here on, any score could be the winning one, and he is certainly aware of that. Look at the way he locked in on that marker and made a mad scramble to get to it for the first down. Here's first down. Now Watson. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. This is first and 10. Ten. 
The handoff to Ford up the middle. And some space here. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. Now they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. Again, they turn to Ford. I think we saw the strategy there, how they moved it to the left hash so they could line things up for them to kick the field goal. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dime. the Browns who are going to get possession first here in overtime as the kicks away. And they will play it safe here and bring this one out to the 25. The Cleveland offense ready to go. Now a first down throw. Watson. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. Now he'll take a shot for Peoples-Jones. That is incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Second and 10. This is Ford. And he'll get maybe a couple, if that, up to the 46. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. Jedrick Wills, former first round pick, guilty there. They run with Ford. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. A shotgun snap for Watson. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Well, their defense did its job. Now they're going to get the football with a chance to win it. And it feels like they ran out on the field, and right before they did, they told the offense, don't worry about this. We got you. Okay, we've got the situation under control. We'll get it back for you for a chance to win the game. And boy, they did it well. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. On second down, here's the option. 
And he is going to lose yardage here. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Now, what can Jackson do here in overtime? And they're able to bring him down at the 20. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. The Ravens send their punter out now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Browns will take over first and 10. The Browns drive about to get started. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. Plan here and try to get points out of this drive, first and 10. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this, if I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands, critical situation. Now's their time. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. Third and two. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. There's a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And he is going to lose yardage here. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Watson gets this to Moore. Now a timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And defensively, Baltimore's in a dime look here on third. Here's Watson. And this is caught. He hits more. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Watson to throw. Now he'll take a shot for Peoples-Jones, and it'll be incomplete. Good job staying with him defensively, and it'll bring up second down. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. Here's second and ten. Again, it's Watson. That's complete. It's Bell. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Watson now going to run the option right. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. 
Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. So now it all comes down to Dustin Hopkins. And now the Ravens are going to take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Browns are going to win the football game. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.